I got fake dreams that all about to come true. Chilling at the top with a nice view. It's a good life right now. It's a good, good life right now. Said I got big dreams that all about to come true. Yeah, yeah. DJ Chris in the house. We're going to be in Longboat and Lido Key for this video. The town of Longboat Key takes up the entire island, while Lido Key is a part of the city of Sarasota. Within Lido Key is St. Armand's Circle, or sometimes it'll be referred to as St. Armand's Key. Regardless, at the end of this video, I'll be giving a Chris livability score for both Longboat and Lido Key, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. We start the video passing over Longboat Pass on the Longboat Pass Bridge, which connects Longboat Key with Anna Maria Island to the north. It's a beautiful area of Florida, no doubt, and to see more videos from this area, including Anna Maria Island, make sure to check out my Sarasota and Bradenton playlist. That's, of course, after you're done watching this video and you've hit that like button. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Well, in order to be able to live on Longboat Key, it helps if you're a big time bowler, or maybe I should say rock star, like Joe Perry, who's the lead guitarist of Aerosmith. Another one time resident of Longboat Key that you might have heard of is Stephen King. Well, it doesn't stop there, as right next to Lido Key is Bird Key, and on it, Jerry Springer was a long time resident before his recent passing. The lead singer of ACDC, Brian Johnson, also resides on Bird Key, and so does one of the greatest tennis players of all time, Martina Navratilova. Outside of that, I'm sure that the rest of the residents here are retired businessmen and women and doctors who were workaholics their entire lives. Ugh. Boring. Just kidding. Well, actually, not really. Not kidding at all. That sounds pretty boring. But satisfying, I suppose, if you can live here. Well, way before all the celebrities and retired boring businessmen and women and doctor people settled here, they say that Longboat Key was occupied by the Tamikuan and Calusa Indians. Before all of this development, there were dozens of shell mounds on Longboat Key displaying that campfires and fish fries were common from this era, which predated the 1500s. Now fast forward to 1891 and Civil War veteran Thomas Mann settled on a 144-acre plot along the north end of the island with his adult sons, in which one of his sons received a separate 144-acre plot of land on the south end of Longboat Key. The first homes on the island were built on the far north end during the 1900s, which is where we started the video. And I can guarantee you that those homes looked nothing like these. Anyway, the island remained mostly vacant land throughout World War II, and during World War II, Longboat Key was actually used as a bombing range? Say what now? Not only would bombs be dropped on the island, but planes a part of the Air Force would fire 50 calibers over the island for target practice. It was called the Longboat Key Gunnery Range, and pilots would train here before being sent to North Africa to fight Germany. Some pilots didn't make it, as many crashed and died in the Gulf of Mexico, but apparently parts of bombs and bullets haven't been removed from the ground here on Longboat Key, and sometimes people will still find them. Also, reports say that the soil is contaminated with barium, which is a toxic compound to humans. But it seems like people aren't worried about that here. The Army Corps of Engineers doubles down on that thought, as they say that no live explosives were used on the island and that the soil contamination presents a low risk to humans. So it seems as if everything is all good and dandy with the soil these days. However, if you recall me saying how the first homes were built on the far northern part of the island back in the early 1900s, people were living on this island when it was being used as a bombing range. 
There was only one road to get on and off the island at the time, with the only bridge being on the far southern end to connect Longboat Key with Sarasota. The bridge connecting Longboat with Anna Maria Island wasn't built until 1958. And at times, the residents that lived on the far northern end of the island would be told to not cross on the road due to target practice taking place. So whether they were getting groceries or they had to take kids to school or whatever it was, they had to wait until officers allowed them to pass through. And the same process for whenever they wanted to return home. Additionally, Longboat Key wasn't the only coastal spot in Florida that was used for military training for World War II. In fact, there's a few others that are nearby, including Passage Key, which is just north of Anna Maria Island, and the Osprey Bombing Range, which is between Siesta Key and Venice Beach. <laughs> you know, these days it's kind of crazy to think of Florida as an empty wilderness, but that's exactly what a lot of Florida was for a very long time. <laughs> World War II took place from 1939 to 1945, and the 1940 census shows that Florida was home to only 1.8 million people. So that made it a perfect place to train for World War II. Today, however, Florida has over 22 million residents, so I'm not sure that that would fly today. Anyway, just to show how fast the state has been growing recently, that's up from the 2010 census count of 18 million. So that easily makes Florida among the fastest growing states in the nation. In fact, I can guarantee you that everyone who's watching this video knows someone or knows of someone, whether it's a family member or a friend, that has moved to Florida within their lifetime. And you can't say that about just any state, like... Wyoming. I mean, who the hell moves to Wyoming? Yeah, nobody. And if you don't know anyone who has moved to Florida, maybe it's time to stop living under a rock and maybe it's time to go out there and meet some people. It's good for your health. All right, well, back to talking about Longboat Key. So after the island was used as target practice for the Air Force, a second bridge was built connecting Anna Maria Island with Longboat Key back in 1958, which I mentioned earlier. That helped things move forward in terms of people living on the island. The town of Longboat Key was established right before that in 1955, and with all of those ingredients in place, development took off throughout the 1960s and 70s. In fact, most of the homes on the island were built during that time, and today, the entire island is pretty much developed with a mix of single-family homes and condominiums. Well, that was certainly some fascinating history, but now let's talk about some of the economic stats for present-day Longboat Key, shall we? Keep in mind that the median age of a Longboat Key resident is 71 years old, so this is definitely a retirement community. When browsing the internet, I found this commenter from a 15-year-old who says that Longboat Key is a great place to live in all, but the median age was like 200. This person also says how it takes forever for them to go to school, especially with all of the snowbirds in the winter, but it seems like they enjoy where they live because the beaches and the weather makes up for it. All right, well, yeah, anyway, Longboat Key has pretty much capped out at its max population, I feel like, as there's no more room for development, and codes are very strict around here, so I'd be shocked if more condo towers are built here in the near future. The population today is 7,500, and the median household income is $121,000 per year, which is absolutely insane, but it makes sense. 66% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $756,000, which, believe it or not, is actually less than the city of Anna Maria, and if you haven't seen that video, once again, make sure to check it out in my Bradenton and Sarasota area playlist. Well, lastly, the poverty rate is 3.5%, so you can see that Longboat Key is most certainly a playground for the elite, and you definitely have to be a top 1%er if you're going to own property here. Well, actually, you could get away with buying a small condo in the $500,000 range if you'd really like. You wouldn't be on the ocean, but you could walk there. And the $500,000 range is no different than living in the nice area of any of the major metro areas in the country. Well, anyway, moving on to the crime now, and there is no crime. At all, according to the most recent data. 
at least no violent crime. On the flip side, there's a little bit of property crime, but not much, so everyone can feel safe here, that's for sure. It sure is a beautiful area though, isn't it? And if you do well in life, work hard for 40 years and save up all that money, why not retire here? It's a perfect place to retire in. I'm finally on my way to all my better days. Don't care what people say. I make the world my stage. Life is a beach. I hit the ocean trying to catch a wave. Dive in the water. All my problems seem to float away. I'ma keep it real. I just want to chill. I don't worry about a thing. I just do it for the thrill. Grass is always greener when you're sitting on a hill. And the grass is never empty because I keep it I real. I got fake dreams that all about to come true. Chilling at the top with a nice view. It's a good life right now, it's a good, good life right now Said I got big dreams, they're all about to come true Chilling at the top with a nice view It's a good life right now, it's a good, good life right now No hesitation, big smile, so contagious. Great times, they out here waiting. I planted these seeds down. I'm watching these flowers bloom. I'm feeling all right now. I'm getting the good news. I'm leaning on faith. Yeah, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Got my head in the clouds. I hope I never leave. The best is yet to come. I know it. I know it. I got big dreams that all about to come true. Chilling at the top with a nice view. It's a good life right now, it's a good, good life right now Said I got big dreams, they're all about to come true Chilling at the top with a nice view It's a good life right now, it's a good, good life right now
All right, so you can't always trust the steak for sale at Walmart, and you can't always trust the newest and latest energy drinks, but you can always trust Chris's livability score. We'll be doing this again for Lido Key at the end of the video. For Longboat Key, the first category is education. Like the one 15-year-old kid said, it's a retirement community, and the schools are further inland. They're not bad schools, though, so the schools get a 10 out of 20. Crime is non-existent, and if the property crime were below 500 for every 100,000 residents, I would give it a perfect score, but it gets the next best thing at a 19 out of 20. Just like with how the violent crime doesn't exist here, however, neither does a downtown, so it gets a 0 out of 20. Sorry, Longboat Key. The economy is also non-existent as Longboat Key is essentially a retirement community. However, the nearby islands of Anna Maria, Lido, and Siesta Key see billions of tourism dollars a year. Also, the residents, or should I say the retirees, that live here have plenty of money. The economy isn't a concern on Longboat Key because there doesn't need to be an economy here. There doesn't need to be high-paying jobs available. So we'll go neutral at a 10 out of 20. If you like water, recreational opportunities are plenty in the area, so an 18 out of 20 there. Next on the list is history, and I was quite impressed with learning about the history of Longboat Key, so I'll give it a 16 out of 20. Amenities are far and few between on the island, but you can go to either Anna Maria or Lido Key and shop and dine anywhere that you'd like. It gets a 14 out of 20. The cost of living is absurd on Longboat Key. It gets a 1 out of 20 in that category. All in all, the Chris livability score for Longboat Key is 88 out of 160. The biggest reasons as to why Longboat Key has such a low score is because of the cost of living, the lack of amenities, and a downtown area. The people that move here, though, don't care about all of that, as they just want a place to retire in with nice year-round warm weather and a beach. Longboat Key has actually been ranked as one of the best places to retire in all of Florida year in and year out, so if you have the money, it's definitely a great place to retire. Maybe I will when I'm 70, and at that point, cars will drive themselves, so driving to Anna Maria or Lido Key won't be a nuisance at all. But anyway, the Chris Livability score isn't necessarily based on great places to retire, so it gets an 88 out of 100. Here's where Longboat Key ranks out of the four cities that I've given a score to so far, and here's the list for Florida cities. With that said, we are now crossing over into Lido Key, so let's talk about it. The first modern developments on Lido Key came in the 1900s when Thomas Martin Worcester came to Sarasota. Martin built a palace on the island, which at the time received a lot of attention in the media, as before that, there was nothing built on the island. Well, later on, John Ringling purchased the island, in which Ringling was one of the five Ringling brothers who owned the Ringling Brothers Circus Show, which still runs today. The street that enters Lido Key from Longboat Key is named after John because it was him who first transformed Lido Key into the destination that it is today, as he brought new businesses, restaurants and shops, and all kinds of other things that were new to the island at the time. If you're wondering where the name Lido comes from, John gave the island that name as Lido is Italian for beach. It should also be said that John changed the geography of the island by moving the sand around to give it a new shape. In the 1940s, a casino was built on Lido Key. However, it didn't last long as it was torn down in 1969. The casino, however, is thought to have been one of the first establishments on Lido Key that made it the tourist destination that it is today. Today, Lido Key is a prime shopping, dining, and beach destination for the region. When it comes to the economic stats, the exact numbers are difficult to find since Lido Key is a neighborhood of Sarasota and it's not its own city, but today there is about 300 people who call Lido Key home, and the median age of those 300 people is 66, so a lot of them are retirees. 
Lido Key is more so a place where people from Sarasota come to hang out for the day or people from out of state come to go to the beach. The median household income for Lido Key residents is $121,000. 61% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $741,000, while the poverty rate is 4%. The crime rate for Sarasota is higher than the U.S. average, which is typical for a city of its size, but finding the crime rate for Lido Key itself is darn near impossible. But most local guides and people on the internet claim that Lido Key is a very safe place to spend some time at, and I tend to agree based off of everything that I've seen. Well, here we are approaching St. Armand Circle, which has over 100 stores, so if you or a lady in your party wants to go shopping on your vacation to Sarasota, make sure to check out St. Armand Circle. John Ringling is credited for the idea of St. Armand Circle as he is the one who sought out Lido Key as having a prime shopping district, unsurprisingly so, as his name is credited for almost everything with the island when it comes to the history of it. I'm surprised that it's not named John Ringling Circle. Well, he's the one who drew out the plans for St. Armand Circle, and the circle is actually misspelled as it's named after Charles A. St. Amand who had his name misspelled on several land deeds. Charles A. St. Amand had a homestead on what became St. Armand Circle back in 1885. Well, St. Armand Circle was officially established in 1926. Sometimes it's referred to as St. Armand's Key, since it's technically an island with wetlands on the northeast side of the island and a canal forming the southwest part of the circular shape. Anyway, in 1925, the causeway was built to connect St. Armand's and Lido Key with Sarasota, and with John Ringling being in the circus business, actual elephants were used to haul the huge timbers from which the bridge and causeway were built. In the 1920s, however, the Depression hit, and John Ringling could no longer keep up with the island financially. Sarasota then took over the bridge, which was starting to see wood rot. The island started to decay quite a bit, and it wasn't for another 20 years until business started to grow again on St. Armand Circle. And during those 20 years, a lot of St. Armand Circle was empty. By 1955, however, stores came back and things were all good and dandy. Even though Ringling died in 1936 and wasn't able to see his plans come to be what he had hoped, I would say that Lido Key and St. Armand's Circle turned out okay, and it's definitely worth spending some time here if you have a vacation to Sarasota planned.
Well, you can't always trust the garbage truck to come on the same day every week, and you can't always trust that your brand new Kia will still be in your driveway, but you can always trust Chris's livability score. Since Lido Key and St. Armand's Key are so closely tied, I'm going to give a score for both of these keys. There are no schools on the island. Just like with Longboat Key and Anna Maria Island, you have to go inland for those. However, it's not like Sarasota has bad schools, so education gets a neutral score of 10 out of 20. Crime is not an issue here, however, it's not perfectly safe like maybe Longboat Key or Anna Maria Island, it gets a 15 out of 20. Downtown would be St. Armand Circle in this case, which has plenty of history and it's full of life, it gets a 17 out of 20. The economy for not only the island, but for the region is strictly tourism based, but it sees a lot of it and it gets a 13 out of 20. Recreational opportunities are plenty for everyone who loves water, so it gets an 18 out of 20. The next category is history, and even though Lido Key and St. Armand Circle were both developed by a circus clown, there's definitely some neat history to consider here. It gets a 12 out of 20. Amenities are plenty and you could spend an entire weekend here and not get bored. It gets a 17 out of 20. The cost of living, just like the other nearby islands, is absurd. So Lido Key and St. Armand Circle, it gets a 1 out of 20. All in all, that is good for a Chris livability score of 103 out of 160. So you can see how with Longboat Key, there's no downtown and there's hardly any amenities on the island. Whereas Lido Key is full of amenities, and there is most certainly a downtown area, so that plays a huge factor into the Chris livability score. I mean, what can I say? I like having a walkable downtown. Can you blame me? I got fake dreams that all about to come true Chilling at the top with a nice view It's a good life right now It's a good, good With that said, I do end the video here. And do me a favor, as if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes, so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Gulf Coast Cities and Towns playlist, can be found in my Florida playlist, can be found in my Sarasota and Bradenton area playlist, and it can be found in my Tourist Towns playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!